Hey everyone, it's Patch 3.23 Affliction, and today we're going to talk about Legion farming. So Legion farming over the past few weeks has actually become kind of cracked. Currently, due to the inflation of Affliction, the price of 5-way runs are almost reaching 2 div per run of 5-ways, and because of that, the price of emblems has also skyrocketed in price as well. Typically, in a Legion farming setup, you don't care about the emblems and the splendors as they're typically worth so little that nobody actually bothers buying them or even picking them up off the ground. But currently, because emblems sell for 2 div per set, that means we can make a stupid amount of money farming emblems once again. This is something we've not seen for Legion farming in quite a while. I'm actually really glad that we're finally back to this kind of Legion farming and because of that, I decided to go check it out myself and well, the results were actually kind of insane. Now, before we go any further, I do you want to mention that well this is legion farming and legion farming does require a fast build so if you're playing something like srs or if you're playing something like a minion build your mileage may vary and you might not even realistically clear the legions well enough for this to be worth your time but if you're playing some sort of bow build or if you're playing some sort of projectile build or some sort of ignite build or any sort of build that has pretty decent clear and you know that can clear a legion fairly well you'll have a great time here and you'll be making a lot of money i really loved the strategy and i loved gathering my initial data for this video just because i was able to sit there and talk to my chat and somehow just miss the fact that a few hours just went by just like that one thing I want to mention about this strategy before going any further is this is a strategy that really likes a head earner. So if you can get yourself a head earner, I would definitely recommend to fit one to your build for this strategy, but only if a head earner makes sense to your build. Obviously, if you're a build that doesn't really benefit from a head earner and you have a mage blood or something else, but if you're a build that would have really liked a head earner and you have a mage blood, honestly, what I might recommend is for you to just go sell your mage blood, buy a head earner, use the rest of the money to buy supplies, and within the same day, you'll have enough money to buy your mage blood back. You'll be making that much money doing legions. That is very easy. Just swap between two belts and just eventually own both of them. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the tree and how to set all this up. So it's going to be very simple. All we want to do is walk into our map, clear the legions and walk out. We want to spend as little time on the map as possible and we only want to do legions as nothing else is going to make as much money per hour. So because of that, our tree is going to be focused around exactly that. With our tree, we are looking to pick up all the legion nodes as this will give us up to five legions per map while at the same time pick up all the harbinger nodes, which you might think are a little bit slow, but they're actually going to be very fast because most of the harbies we will just passively be doing while we do the legions. Realistically for me, I end up doing most of my harbies and all of them kind of end up dying with the exception of one or two for free while actually doing the legions themselves. And currently because fracturing orbs are about 30 div each, this is very much worth going for. So in terms of our tree, we're going to be starting at the bottom and we're going to be pathing through mad devotion just to get out of the starting area as fast as possible and for my last three points i personally chose to block a few mechanics as this will give me more legion chance but you could put these three points wherever you want we're gonna go over and pick up monumental as this legion chance will stack with everything else we do potentially giving us a fifth legion in all of our maps while at the same time pick up supplication as shrines are amazing not only are shrines going to give you things like acceleration shrine which is going to make your projectiles go substantially further but also pair really nicely with the gloom shrine we'll be adding to our map which for some builds is actually going to make a really big difference in terms of them being able to clear the legion from there we're also going to pick up on miss arrival since we want to do harbingers we're going to be picking up shaping the mountains and we're going to be picking up all three of the shapings because currently dunes which is the map we're going to be running sell for about 15 chaos each and when we pick up all three shapings and when we run singular focus we are going to get so many dunes that we are going to not only over sustain our maps we're also going to end up basically turning every single map that drops within our maps into a stack of 15 chaos orbs which is very efficient to pick up with this we are going to be adding in packed with energy that's going to be nico tech what's going to happen in packed with energy is we're going to be putting a sulfate scarab on every map to guarantee that we get the sulfate veins and that just means we're going to get a free 115 percent increased damage and 45 percent movement speed in every single map we do allow us to clear these a lot faster we don't need our first care slot for anything and it's just two passive points to pick this up making this very valuable to pick in the strategy from there we're going to be pathing over to the right side and pick up chains of command as well as the tiny two nodes it's just going to give us a lot more loot and if you struggle with actually clearing the legions what i might recommend is to pick up protracted battle these monsters are going to have a lot of health due to the compasses and the passive points we're going to be picking up so them taking 50 percent increased damage might help some builds be able to fully clear the legions but if you don't need this then ignore this point completely we're then going to also pick up the gateway because we need to pick up all six gateways on the tree because we're going to be going seventh gates to add an additional legion to our strategy and from there we're going to also go and pick up singular focus we're going to get unspeakable offense to make the harbingers spawn substantially faster we are going to get constant battle for more legion chance as well as the left and right side nodes this is going to give us more mariketh and templar army chance we don't want the other three 
We're going to get more than an abundance of those as those are the common ones. But the two on the sides, Merikith and Templar are the two rare ones that we want to see more of. Then we're going to also go over, pick up Emblematic. We are going to be farming Emblems. So picking up a raw 0.6% chance for Splinters to drop us Emblems is great. We're also picking up both the top and the bottom side. The bottom side is going to give us Legion chance while the top side is going to give us even more chance for Emblems. We're then going to also go and get War Supplies. This means we're going to get additional War Horde. And War Hordes are going to be great because we are going to also be picking up Pillage Treasure, which means all of the chests and War Hordes have an additional reward. And we're not going to get the left side, which is going to give us more general chance because we're always going to have guaranteed generals through a Gilded Legion Scarab anyways. From there, we're going to move on to all the Glitters. This is going to give us more Shrine Chance and it's going to scale really well with all the Shrine Duration that we have. We're also going and getting Drawn to Power and Synchronism. Then we're going to also pick up First Wave and the Nodes in the Middle just because Quant is always really nice to get. And we're going to be finishing up the tree with getting piled treasures which can give us substantially more rewards out of the chest from the legions and we're going to get logistical support now the thing about logistical support is you might potentially have to not pick this up logistical support makes it so the monsters have 50 percent more life for each additional reward they have so some of the monsters might actually become raid bosses especially when you combine it with the section that we're going to be running that's going to make them have 50 percent more life so you can take it and you might potentially need to take protracted battle or you might choose to opt not to get logistical support at all. Lastly, we're going to put up the two top slants at the top of the tree just because map modifier effect is just more frequent. We're going to be ending the tree up with Wrath of the Cosmos and Red Altars just because Red Altars are worth your time to do. Now moving on next, let's talk about the mapping setup itself. So the mapping setup is going to be very simple. For our sextants, we're going to want to run an additional legion sextant just because we are there farming legions, which is what we want, as well as the emblems and splinters are duplicated in our maps. Now, this is going to give the legion monsters 100% more life. So if you are also running logistical supports with the 50% more life, these monsters are going to have a lot of health. So as I mentioned, you might want to pick a protracted battle if you can't deal with the monsters having that much life. But this is going to be crucial because emblems currently sell for two div a set. Typically, in most legion setups, you would not be including this, but it is finally time to include the emblem duplication compass once again nice thing here is because nobody includes these in their setup they are super cheap so these are effectively just free money currently with that we're also gonna be adding in mysterious harbinger now with the mysterious harbinger compass this is going to spawn a harby by your boss but you don't actually need to bother with the boss in my opinion i feel like killing the boss and the harby by the boss is a little bit of a waste of a time but the reason we're adding this in is so the other harbingers in our maps are going to drop more currency shards which means we're going to more consistently see fracturing shards and fracturing orbs out of the harbies and lastly we are going to be running gloom shrine now, Gloom Shrine is wonderful to add to all of your maps. Not only does Gloom Shrine give you a free explodey effect into your build, which for some builds might be the make or break thing that lets you actually clear these legions well enough, but at the same time, it increases the duration of all the shrine effects in the maps by 50%. Meaning, if you end up finding yourself a Spellical Shrine or an Acceleration Shrine, those shrines are basically going to last a whole map, which is going to make it feel really good to clear the map. Moving on to our scarabs, they're going to be very simple. So, we're running a Rusted Sulfate Scarab. There's no reason to run Polished or Gilded or anything else, as we just simply want this on there for Nico to appear in our maps to gain benefits from Pact with Energy. We're then going to also be running Gilded Legion Scarab. Now, typically, the meta for Legion is to run Polished because because Gilded gives you generals and you don't want generals because they just take forever to kill and are difficult to kill. But in this case, because we are farming splinters and we are farming emblems and we want them to actually drop in our maps, we want to use Gilded Legion Scarab. The nice thing about this is that currently Polished Scarabs are about 30 chaos each, while Gilded are only 10 C each because nobody wants the generals, but we do. Meaning we can abuse the low prices to make even more money. We're then going to be adding in a Gilded Harby Scarab for more Harbies. You can run Polished or Rusted if you feel like it. But personally, I always feel like Gilded is worth running, but this is something you can compromise on. And then lastly, we're going to be adding in a Gilded Cardo Scarab. Now, you don't need the Cardo Scarab for anything special. We don't care about maps seen. But the reason we're adding this in is because the maps are 15 chaos each, meaning we want to get maps to drop because every single map that drops is effectively a pile of chaos orbs. When we combine this with all the maps seen nodes on the tree, we are going to be seeing somewhere around four to five maps dropping per map, meaning we're going to make somewhere around half a div per map just in maps alone, which is really good considering the price of the Cardo Scarab. And lastly, in terms of the map that we want to run, personally, I've been doing this on Dunes, and Dunes, I believe, is the considered meta map to do Legions on. But you do have alternatives of Cemetery, if you like Cemetery instead. Although for some builds, Cemetery might feel worse because there's a bunch of walls and there's a bunch of raised sections that might make killing the Legions in it a little bit difficult. And if you don't want to do either Cemetery or Dunes, your other good option is going to be Tropical Island. I would definitely recommend Dunes, as Dunes is just the best layout for this. It's just open, flat area. But any of those three maps are fine. The way you want to 
to set up the map itself is going to be very simple. We simply are just going to chisel the map and we are simply just going to alk it and then roll for whatever rolls your build can't do. You're simply just looking to not do any brick mods. For the map device, the setup is going to be very simple. We simply put in our sextants, we put in our scarabs, and from map device, we're going to scroll down and pick up legion, as well as adding red altars to every single one of our maps. This legion is going to stack with all the other legions, meaning it's just a free legion for six chaos, and red altars are just really good to do simply because the invitations are worth a lot, and the currency you can get from red altars is worth a lot due to nobody running red altars. Next, let's talk about how to run the maps themselves. So you can do these maps any way you want, but my preferred way, and I think this is probably the fastest way to do these maps, is to very quickly run through the map, kill as many monsters as you can to start stacking your head in buffs if you have a head hunter. Click on all the sulfite veins as they're going to give you more damage and more movement speed. Click on as many shrines as you can to try and fish for an acceleration shrine as that'll make you clearing the legions substantially easier. And once you've quickly done a lap around the whole map, you'll also be able to see where all the legions are. And once you've done all of your clickies, just start walking up to legions, stand in the middle, break them out by just simply attacking in all directions. You are going to have to go out of your way to kill the generals because typically the generals spawn too far away out of render distance to where you can't hit them from the middle. Sometimes they spawn close so you can just break them out from the center but you'll have to go to where both the generals are and a very easy way to know where they are is if you look at the monolith once it's open it will have like two purple smoke effects going in two separate directions and those are just pointing directly to where the generals are so you follow those as a way to find exactly where they are and once you break both them out you'll be able to fight the legion itself now personally what i do is i just ignore it and i just immediately go to the next monolith and immediately click on it the unfortunate thing about legion is you can't click on a new monolith until the stasis period of a previous legion is over so what you want to do is break out a legion move on to the next legion break it out move on to the next legion break it out now as you're doing that, you'll be passively killing some of the legion that you broke out already. But ideally, you just want to pop all the legions so all the monsters are out on the map. And then you just go through and clear it as normal and take out all the legions and loot all the chests and kill all the generals as you make your way through the map. You can go legion by legion to where you break it out, clear it, loot it, then break the next one out. But for me, I found it substantially more efficient to just break all of them out and get your loot that way. But once you finish that up, all you have to do is just simply leave your map and go again. You can kill the boss every time your senior extra invitation is ready to be picked up. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother the boss or I wouldn't bother the harpy by it. You might have a few straggler harpies here and there that you have to go and kill by themselves, but they shouldn't have too much extra time to your map. And you can also just opt to ignore any harpies you didn't just passively kill while you did your legion. It's up to you. One final quick thing I want to add here in terms of how to do the maps is all the incubators they're going to be getting from all the legions. Now, personally, there's only two incubators you really are going to care about. One is going to be the ornate incubators, which give you currency, and the other ones are going to be the diviner incubators. Personally, what I've been doing is I've been running around 10 maps to begin with. That's going to give me a lot of incubators, and I just put all these into a tab, and then after 10 maps, I just simply go through and just type ornates, and then type diviners and just take all the ornates, all the diviner incubators, put them in my extra inventory from Wildwood and simply just only run these. You're going to get a lot of different incubators and you can potentially add them and run them later, such as the scarab ones or the fossil ones. But your main priority should always be to put diviners on everything you can, as long as you have diviners, is these are going to give you a lot of stacked decks and the stacked decks are worth a lot of money. And then ornates next. Realistically, the majority of these incubators are just going to be massive surplus and they're just going to have to be something that you either put on your gear as you're doing other strategies or whenever you somehow run out of ornates and diviners but you realistically will never run out of these as you get them basically at the rates at which you can actually consume them so next up let's talk about the loot so i did 50 of these maps as a sample size of my stream and you can look at my bot if you want to see the maps themselves but i thought a sample size of 50 is going to be a pretty decent amount given that the loot from this is super consistent and there really aren't any outliers they can get. And in total, we end up getting a full quad tab, which is mostly filled with maps and emblems, and about a third of a second quad tab. If you want to look at this in POE stack, this is all the loot that we got. So the only outlier that I want to talk about here is the fact that we did get a full fracturing orb. Now, in my opinion, I don't think this is too much of an outlier, given that with a high Harby counts strategy such as this, you should expect to see a fracturing orb every 100 to 150 maps or so. These aren't as rare as people think they are. So realistically, seeing 1 in 50 isn't too much of an outlier case, especially given that we've already seen 9 fracturing shards within the first 50 maps. Realistically, I would say this is a little bit lucky, but it's not super lucky to the point where we should include it. I feel like it's fine to include in here. But as we can see in terms of total loot we made 101 div worth of loot in here now the thing about this 101 div is that it's not counting any of the emblems 
as emblems are incorrectly priced. Currently, it thinks that Meriketh and Timeless Templar emblems are 40 to 50 C, which is not true. These in div rate sell for about half a div each right now. They don't actually sell for 50 chaos each. So I took all the emblems out and I also went through and I took out all of the incubators as incubators are not correctly priced either. The only ones I chose to left in here are the skitter incubators as five to 10 chaos per incubator is correct. You're not going to ever actually sell these incubators to people, but that is about the expected outcome of these incubators as they're going to give you a polished or a gilded scare most of the time. And polished and gilded are worth around five to 10 C each, depending on which ones you get. So I feel like just leaving these in and counting them isn't too big of a deal. And the same goes for the diviners, simply because diviners most of the time will spit out stack decks and stack decks are worth around 10 to 15 chaos per incubator as typically you're going to be getting somewhere around three to four stack decks per incubator. The rest of these are left out so feel free to potentially add a few extra div in here from the total value that you would have gotten out of these incubators but again we're not selling any of these. These are just something that you're going to be putting passively on your gear if you feel like it to get a little bit of extra loot. Now I know there's a lot of bad incubators and I have all of them filtered out of my filter because I don't want to actually see any of them. These are only the incubators that are actually worth putting on your gear to get a mass amount of the rewards from them. One Personal thing, if you want my personal opinion on this, is these fossilized incubators are actually worth a lot right now. And we end up getting 79 of them just because perfect fossils are worth around one to five per div and shuddering fossils are worth somewhere around one to eight per div. I mean that these 79 fossilized incubators are probably going to give you a few div just on their own simply due to how high the fossil prices are right now. But anyways, moving on from all that, the rest of the loot in here is very simple to get rid of. As you can see, the majority of our loots is simply going to be mostly emblems. And if we quickly look at the tabs in here, the main thing you're going to see this being dominated by is stack deck which we ended up getting a total of 500 emblems which is probably around half of the total items in this tab and maps which are very easy to sell in bulk especially because these are dunes and dunes is one of the most coveted map out of all the maps there's going to be a few things in here that you're going to have to single sell. Some of those being a few scarabs, but realistically, these you're just going to add into your scarab tab and just sell eventually once you have a bunch of scarabs, especially if you end up doing the scarab incubators, they'll give you even more scarabs to sell. And then we'll have a little bit of bubblegum currency here and there. Now, one thing I want to mention about the bubblegum currency is my filter is unbelievably strict. And because my filter is super strict, I really didn't see much currency in here. Realistically, all I saw was ancient shards and ancient orbs from the harbingers, annulment shards and annulment orbs from the harbingers and a few big stack of items here and there. For example, I have a few scours, a few awakened sextants, a few vol orbs, but realistically, I have most things hidden on my filter. I don't see chaos orbs. I don't see chisels. I don't see the majority of loot. So the loot that you're seeing here is from an unbelievably strict magic find filter applied to legion farming. So if your filter is a little bit less strict than this, you're going to see substantially more loot. But personally, I felt like picking up all the loot was just too much of a hassle and I didn't really feel like it was worth it. So that out of the way, let's actually count how much loot is in here. So again, this is 101 div when not accounting for all the emblems and when not accounting for the maps because currently POE stack thinks that maps are five and a half chaos each when they are currently 15 to 20 chaos in bulk. When we look at this, the only emblems that we actually care about are going to be the Meriketh and the Templar emblems because we are looking to sell these in sets where we're going to give someone an eternal emblem, a Karui emblem, a Vol emblem, and a Meriketh and Templar emblem. And these currently go for about two div per set on TFT and Global A20. And you could also just sell them on the website for two div per set. So when we look at all these, we can see that we got 33 Meriketh and 36 Timeless Templar. Now these are going to even out over time. So let's just say between these two, we end up getting 35 total sets that were sellable. So if we want to add everything together, that means with 35 total sets, that is worth 70 div in emblem sets alone. Then we have 101 div worth of total value in this tab. And again, you can choose to potentially remove the 30 div for the fracturing orb or not. And then we also need to add in the price of maps. We currently have 148 maps and these go for about one div to 15 maps so this is basically 10 extra div in maps when we add all this together we can see that in total in 50 maps and in about five hours of doing this i made 181 div worth of total loot so if you look at that in terms of a div rate we are making about 36 div an hour now one thing i want to mention about this 36 div an hour is this is not including red altars. During the strategy and during these five hours of farming this, I did not click a single red altar. I just didn't feel like reading them. I didn't feel like dealing with them. So I missed out on a very large amount of awakened sextants and a very large amount of Eldritch currency. If you want to look in here at embers, I only end up picking 10 greater and six grand embers and five hours of farming red altars. Realistically, this should have been probably 10 plus div, especially considering embers are currently 
tend to a div, but I just did not want to deal with them. You could also look at my awaken section stack and you could see I only got 26 awaken sections. When you add these in to the strategy of you actually clicking the altars, because it's just something I didn't want to do. Realistically, I would have probably made somewhere around 200 div. I can very realistically see red altars adding 20 extra div over five hours or about two extra div an hour to whatever strategy you're doing, especially a strategy like this, where we're doing maps very, very quickly. So if you want to add in the profits and this is a very, very big low ball of how much it actually would have given you. I would say instead of making 181 div in five hours, we probably made somewhere around 200 div. So we got 19 extra div from altars in five hours of farming altars. So if you look at it that way, then as we can see, this strategy is 40 div an hour. This also probably is a little bit higher considering we probably would have made a lot more from red altars, but I'm just being very conservative here and we're just going to stick with 40 div as I think 40 div is a very round number. And so there really is for the strategy. I think it's really great. I think it's really fun, especially if you're a build that can run a head on her. This is just a strategy that you just go in, zoom, zoom, kill everything, blow up the screen, have fun, get a little bit of loot, and then just immediately go into the next map. You can do these maps very really quickly, so you're only spending a few minutes per map. I don't think there's a single person who actually doesn't like farming legions just because they're just a really good time and they're really chill and really fun to do. I remember for the five hours that I collected loot to do this video with, I just sat there and talked to my chat the whole time and we just had fun and I multiple points didn't realize that an hour or two of farming went by. Legion farming is just so easy to do while just chilling out and like talking to friends or watching a stream or doing something else. And because of that, I think Legion farming is just not only a super comfy strategy, but it's a really great strategy right now, given just how much money it could make per hour while it being a really fun mapping strategy. If you have any questions, cuties, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I also stream on Twitch every single day and I'll probably do a strategy for a few more days after this video is posted. So if you want to see me do a strategy yourself, feel free to come by my Twitch or if you just want to come hang out with all the kitties i'll be more than happy to see you there other than that i hope you kitties enjoyed and hope to see you in the next video